Let's start this week with resilience, and then we'll talk about why the next three weeks might actually determine our next four years. No pressure or anything, just a few stories to have on your radar as you launch into a brand new week. It's about midnight, Sunday night, going into Monday morning-ish. It's my quiet time to plan for smarter news, so resilience is a great place to start. Resilience is the name of the SpaceX spacecraft that launched four astronauts into space on Sunday night. And the reason why this matters is many believe this is the beginning of the next era of space travel in the United States. NASA essentially hired SpaceX to get these astronauts into space. And some believe using private companies, harnessing the competition, recruiting these private companies will help lower the price of space travel, making it more efficient for us to get astronauts into space more frequently. And so this could be the beginning of that chapter. These astronauts are going to be on a six month mission at the International Space Station. One of the things they're gonna be doing is looking to see if they can grow radishes in space, which you know, I'm sure they have more important things to do, but I thought was random enough that you should know about it. <laughs> and they in fact named their spacecraft resilience because of 2020. They said, look, the pandemic, civil unrest, economic hardships, resilience is the word of 2020. And that's a little ironic because the founder of SpaceX, Elon Musk, wasn't at the launch. He wasn't at the launch because it's believed he has a moderate case of COVID-19. I say believed because he shared rather publicly that he received two positive tests and two negative tests. And I know some of you have asked about the reliability of testing, which continues to surface in the news, but we do know that we are seeing rising infections in America. One of the reasons why we know that is because we're seeing rising hospitalization rates along with rise in positive testing as well. One top health official said, we're not just seeing an epidemic like in the Northeast, like we saw in the spring, we're seeing an epidemic or a little epidemics erupt all over the country. And this is the reason for concern. In one state, Washington state, the site of the very first confirmed case of COVID-19 back in January, almost 10 months ago, issued new restrictions, shutting down indoor dining, no working out at gyms. This is one of the states that's making this move. Maybe in your area, you're seeing this as well as health officials are really concerned before the holiday. Even if we're, we're behaving responsibly and we're we're staying in our small groups of friends. If there's higher infection in the community, there's still a higher risk that we could be spreading this virus to each other. And while the majority of people will do just fine with COVID-19 and recover at home, there are still some unknowns. Many of you have asked about the mortality rate with COVID-19. And bottom line is we don't have a really good statistic on that yet. There's a very interesting article in the Journal of Nature that interviewed doctors all over the world. And the consensus was these doctors felt like the mortality rate for severe cases of COVID-19 was dropping in their hospitals, that they were getting better at treating this illness and helping people survive. But there's not the statistics to back that up yet because we're seeing the infection spread so rapidly now, and we have no way of being able to have a statistic that would really be informative for you because we can't break it down per age, gender, pre-existing condition. There seems to be uncertainty around that statistic because how quickly this story is evolving. So I think it's just useful to know that we can seek that number, but we still don't have a number really to use publicly yet. I know it's been a number that I've been looking for. What What is that number? The bottom line is that we don't have a good one yet. In the meantime, we know that COVID-19 is something that we're seeing all around the world. Political uncertainty is something that we're seeing all around the world as well, and in, in far corners of the world. For example, in Peru, we're seeing a president removed from office. We're seeing deadly protests in the streets. If you are waking up in Peru today, you don't have a president. That's one story we're watching because it's a question about whether or not democracy will continue in Peru. We've talked a little bit about Armenia and Azerbaijan. If you're in that part of the world, you may be, may be asked to leave your home right now because a ceasefire after six weeks of intense fighting is causing some people to actually have to leave where they live. And so the reason why I highlight this is because the peaceful transfer of power is something very sacred and very unique to America. And it's for that reason that there's so much focus on the next steps now after the election. This weekend, we saw supporters of President Trump in Washington, D.C. We saw some confrontations on the streets uh, with those that disagree with them. 
At the same time, we're seeing the Biden camp really move to pressure the Trump administration to share more information for what they believe is going to be the transfer of the Trump administration out and the entry of the Biden camp in. Here's why the next three weeks matter. Over the next three weeks, states are really working hard to settle all disputes in their states because on December 8th, they want the results. If they have the results by December 8th, really the results cannot be disputed. It's a technicality of federal law. We can get into it at a later date, but you just need to know that's why the next three weeks matter. Over the next several days, in fact, counties are gonna be turning in their results to their secretary of states in different states, like Nevada, for example. And that at that time, even, even with other legal challenges in different states, the Trump campaign can make certain requests. Like for example, they can make a request for a recount. They could do so in a state like Wisconsin. They may have to pay for it, but they could do it at these different stages. So this is why the next three weeks really matter. We're looking to try to settle all disputes because by December 8th, the states really want it settled. Whether or not it will be settled is another question entirely, but this is why the next three weeks matter. So we can get into all sorts of hypothetics when they arise. <laughs> no matter how you see the world, just an observation as a journalist, 2020 is a very unique news cycle, and that's an understatement. But there is no quickly turning the page on any story in 2020, whether it's presidential politics or the pandemic or any number of really challenging topics that we've had to confront. Usually news cycles push us forward, but these news cycles are causing us to sit wait and really confront tough questions or tough topics. Who knew we would have such an education on the Electoral College, but we are in 2020. So I don't know what all of that means, uh, but I'll be curious your comments on that. And I'm really glad that we're sharing in it together. All the stories that I mentioned, we have links to on our website. We bullet pointed them and we have quick resources if you'd like to read more. In the meantime, questions and comments, let me know. And as always more on smarternews.com. Have a great week, guys.